Question number five, Dr Kennedy Graham. Thank you, Mr Chairman. My question is to the Prime Minister. Does he stand by his statement? Order. Order. Dr Does Kennedy Graham, start again. Thank you, sir. My question is to the Prime Minister. Does he stand by his statement that the risks to New Zealand from any commitment of military assistance to counter Islamic State militants in Iraq would be, quote, no greater than I think the risks are currently here today? If so, why? Mr Speaker. Honourable Jerry Brownlee. Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Prime Minister, yes, as I said yesterday, this is an evolving issue. No commitment of military assistance has been made. Officials are preparing advice for ministers and cabinet to consider a range of options, including humanitarian, diplomatic and military contributions. This will include advice around risks to New Zealand and New Zealanders from any contribution. Supplementary. Supplementary question, <coughs> Dr Kennedy Graham. What evidence did he originally have to base his original statement on and any further evidence to reflect that evolving situation? And will he share it, consistent with genuine national security interests, so that both the parliament and the people of this country can be properly informed on this important matter? Honourable uh, Jerry Brownlee. Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Prime Minister, um, I've made it clear in the past that there are New Zealanders uh, who want to go and fight with the ISIL forces, uh, and there are people who want to uh, come into this country uh, from having perhaps fought with them. Uh, those are concerns that the government has. Beyond those statements, uh, I'm not offering anything more at this point. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Dr Kennedy Graham. Is the Prime Minister aware that countries facing security risks to their citizens are those engaged in the military campaigns against Islamic extremists, primarily the US, UK and Australia, and now, of course, Canada? The Honourable Jerry Brownlee. Uh, Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Prime Minister, uh, it could appear that way. We don't quite know what the situation is in Canada. But let's be clear that if we were to do nothing uh, and simply live with the threat that New Zealand clearly is now part of, then in fact uh, we would be allowing terrorists to dictate our current foreign policy arrangements and therefore significantly impede the rights and freedoms of New Zealanders to make their own choices. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Dr Kennedy Graham. Is he not concerned that any involvement in the military action against ISIL may be actually doing more harm than good for global peace and security? And does he think that we have an independent foreign policy when the Prime Minister has already stated that New Zealand should join the US and, quote, other like-minded countries in fighting the Islamic State. Honourable Jerry Brownlee. Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Prime Minister, uh, no decision has been made about what we might do if we do uh, join such an action. Uh, and yes, of course, there are worries about the threats uh, that could occur here in New Zealand. And in case the member hasn't noticed, there are considerable worries even across the organisation of this parliament with some of the restrictions that have been put in place today. These are not uh, occasions uh, where you can simply ignore what's going on around you and hope that being, by being uh, uh, somehow passive about the way in which these organisations operate, that that will make them go away. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Dr Kennedy Graham. Does he agree with the UN's global counter-terrorism strategy of 2006 that, rather than doing nothing, or ignoring what is going on around us, recognise that the real triumph over terrorism requires the elimination of its causes? And if so, how does he foresee New Zealand contributing through the Security Council in that respect? Honourable Jerry Brownlee. Uh, Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Prime Minister, I'd note that that uh, statement from the UN is now eight years old and that the world has changed a lot in that time. But what we have said is that our consideration will be across a range of possibilities, uh, humanitarian uh, contributions, uh, governments' contributions, all sorts of things. Nothing is ruled out. As the Prime Minister has repeatedly said, uh, they are all under consideration. 
Supplementary, sir. Supplementary question, Dr Kennedy Graham. In light of the fact that the UN's global counter-terrorism strategy of 2006 was reaffirmed in its entirety two months ago by the Security Council, having regard to the time elapsed since then, what plan does New Zealand have as a member-elect to the Security Council to develop its conflict pre prevention role in Syria and Iraq as called for in Council Resolution 2171 of 21 August? Honourable Jerry Brown. Uh, Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Prime Minister, all matters relating to whatever we might do in response to the ISIL threat uh, to countries like ours uh, is, are currently under consideration and once ministers and cabinet have completed that consideration, then clearly this House will be uh, notified of, of that uh, deliberation. Question number six, Chris Hipkins. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to...